New from KTAL Records, 22 explosive hits. What? Hey everybody, it's me, Steve Schnee, the CD Junkie. On this episode of CD Junkie, I'm going to be talking about a great trio by the name of The Roaches. Now, The Roaches consist of three sisters, Maggie, Terry, and Suzzy Roach. And they made a string of albums that each of them contained these wonderful gems. And the true hallmark are these beautiful melodies and, and these sibling harmonies that are quite unique, sometimes unconventional, but always beautiful. I'd like to start these episodes off by telling you how I got into the artist and that's basically because I just heard various tracks throughout the years uh, you know when the first albums were coming out uh, you know self-titled and uh, etc and I'd see the albums in the bin and I was really interested and finally uh, by 1985 I was hooked I was into the band and I went and actually saw them live, sat in the front row. Uh, of course, now I can't remember the venue, but uh, I, I, I'm surprised I could remember it because I was stoned out of my gourd. And I, I've gotten stoned like 10 times in my life. That's one of the times that I was gone, but I loved every minute of the show. And yes, I can remember. In fact, I also remember when the show was over, I turned around about five aisles back was Richard Thompson just standing there. And I go, oh my God, Richard Thompson. And if y'all know who Richard Thompson is, you'll all know uh, he, he's just a fantastic artist. But he was at that show. And, well, so were a lot of other people. Anyway, let's get started. And I'm going to go through their catalog. And yes, I will have a short medley at the end of this video and introduce you to the sounds of the roaches if you haven't heard them before. But let's go all the way back to 1975 with the album Seductive Reasoning. This is uh, Maggie and Terry Roach. Now this is the only non-Roaches album I'm going to show on the show because this is sort of the sort of the formative years because uh, Suzzy has recorded her own albums, Terry has recorded her own albums and you know Maggie and 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 Suzzy and and you know so they've had combinations of, of you know getting together uh, but I'm just going to focus on the Roaches but I wanted to show this. Maggie and Terry sang back up uh, on a Paul Simon album Paul Simon was a real big fan of theirs a uh, real big supporter and he actually got them a deal with Sony Records and they actually put out this album now the album was re-released with that cover that might be a more familiar cover for you but this is a wonderful album it's got a lot of great songs uh, Paul Simon actually produces a song or two on this as well Maggie and Terry's voices sound wonderful together but after this album they brought their younger sister Suzzy into the group and they released in 1979 the self-titled album. This is probably one of their most famous album covers and it's absolutely unique. Are they folk? Well, probably. Are they pop? Maybe. Uh, th there's so many, there's jazz chords in there. There's so much going on. This album was produced by Robert Fripp and uh, uh, he very smartly, very astutely, he mixed their voices above the instrumentation. Now, the instrumentation is mostly acoustic guitars, etc., but he knew that the charm of this group was their vocals, and things like Hammond Song uh, are just beautiful and haunting, uh, and they are very quirky. They are an unconventional group. You know, you think, oh, girls, yeah, they're going to do, you know, Carly Simon type stuff. Uh, you know, this is the late 70s after all. No, I think the reason that the Roaches didn't really catch on in the big commercial way is because they did things their own way. They were charming. They were funny. Uh, their music could be heartbreaking. So that came out in 1979. That was their debut album. Now, their second album was called Nerds, and that came out in 1980. This album was produced by, I think, Roy Haley, who produced a lot of the Paul Simon and Simon and Garfunkel and Art Garfunkel records. And this is a, more of a band album. It's still predominantly acoustic guitars and stuff, but there's piano in there. There's, uh, uh, you know, they're, they're not going over to the evil side, the rock and roll side yet but uh it's a really fun album you know shows their humorous side more but there are some really great touching moments on there as well and that's the great thing about them is they were constantly doing things differently uh evolving changing and you know you know sometimes you didn't know what was going to come next on a roaches album and uh, uh but it was always fun and surprising now the album keep on doing came out in 1982 this was again produced by robert fripp and this is another fine album it's closer to the first album uh although there are more instruments on this one losing true is i think 
just as good as, if not better than Hammond Song, which is from the first album. And uh, another fine collection of songs, different moods and, and unique takes on life. Uh, they were singing just about normal things, you know, that, that both men and women could relate to. Just a really wonderful album. Now, I, I don't know the reasons behind it, but in 1985, it took three years for the next album to come out. There's several producers on this album, and it's called Another World. And this was a huge stylistic change. Uh, it's more of a, you know, it's got that 80s sound to it, uh, a lot of 80s sounding keyboards. It's not a synth pop album at all. But uh, Carter Cathcart from Laughing Dogs is on this. There's a song on the album called Love Radiates Around that was written by a guy named Mark Johnson, who was a big power pop guy. I really, really dig this album. It's completely different than the other albums but like some of my favorite songs are here Love Radiates Around uh, their version of Come Softly to Me the song Weeded Out is one of my favorites as well and this is a fun album I think it caught people off guard because they were expecting more of that folky sound and this was a much more pop more keyboard sound but it's still unique songwriting you're not going to find uh, th this standard top 40 material on this album because they are unique songwriters and unique vocalists and, and really really powerful in that sort of sibling you know that entangling of the voices a lot of depth there uh and you can even hear that up you know in the 80s production that was the last album for warner brothers records uh, they actually released an ep uh called no trespassing now this isn't one of my favorite roaches releases i really really dig it a lot but it's only four songs and uh this came out on rhino in 1990 but uh, in my research, I found it was actually originally released in 1986, which I don't know if that's true or not, but No Trespassing. I mean, you may be thinking, oh, he doesn't like that album at all. No, I do, but I mean, everything else is so much better than this. Uh, but still, it was a nice transition thing. It still continued along with that sort of modern keyboard sound. Like I said, not synthesizer. You know, but there's, you know, the, the thing about it is a lot of jazz chords, a lot of things happening uh, in a Rocha song that you're not expecting because they're thought of as a folk band, but there's so much more. Like I said, many, many layers to what they do. In 1989, out comes the album Speak. They had signed to Paradox Records, which I think was the label that was founded by um, uh, Marty Scott, uh, who founded Gem Records and, and uh, Passport Records and stuff like that. But this continued in that sort of keyboard commercial production uh, vein. But the songs are fantastic. The two probably most popular ones on this are uh, Everything is Good and Big Nothing but another fine album by The Roaches. Now in 1990, also on Paradox, they released a Christmas album called We Three Kings. Uh, unfortunately, I have it stored away with the rest of my Christmas album, so I couldn't pull it out with this video because that would have taken about two hours to get to those boxes. But I will post a picture of the album right here. I think it was later reissued on Ryko Disc, but uh, the Paradox uh, Records was the first uh, issue in 1990. In 1992, they released the album A Dove, another great album. Uh, moving on from the, the speak sound, uh, still commercial, still uh, keyboards, uh, but the song's beautiful and the vocal blend is beautiful. And when you compare it to like the first album or Keep On Doing, you know, the really folky stuff, you know, that's what a lot of people preferred, but I love to hear a band evolve and change. Uh, were they doing it for the label? Were they doing it for themselves? I don't care. The songs are good enough. Songs like Ing and Beautiful Love of God, a lot of great songs on that. That is called A Dove, and that came out in 1992. Now, in 1994, they released a children's album. Well, it's more of a family album called Will You Be My Friend? It's a fun album, uh, very lighthearted, and uh, again, those sibling harmonies are heavenly if there was anybody out there waiting for the roaches to return to their folk roots maybe even a little bit of uh, early americana a little touch of country uh you're gonna get a wonderful album by the name of can we go home now uh first time i heard this i was going oh it's great you know they are returning those roots and after a couple listens uh, just the songs just just melt into you there are keyboards on here but it's really closer to that folky sound that a lot of people love that the Roaches did. And still, the vocals, the melodies, everything is is beautiful. Now, again, let me stress, it's eccentric and, and unconventional. They are unique. Uh, they are unlike anybody else. There's been nobody out there like the Roaches uh, before or since. Fantastic stuff. Now, unfortunately, that was it for 12 years. They did not return until Moonswept. An album just as good as Can We Go Home Now, based in acoustics and 
great songs and really touching moments and real fun moments, especially the song No Shoes, which seemed to get a lot of airplay uh, around that time. But really a wonderful album. And that was It by the Roaches, believe it or not. There is a CD called The Collective Work of the Roaches, which is a best of. Uh, and um, I've got a picture of that right here. Now, unfortunately, Maggie Roach passed away in 2017. And they put together a compilation here called Where Do I Come From? And this is essentially songs she either composed or was, you know, the main force behind. And this spans their entire career. And while they're all the standard uh, album versions that you're used to, you really need to track this down because there are two Maggie Roach demos on it that are unreleased anywhere else. She was truly a gifted artist and still you can hear the beauty in her music and it's just absolutely wonderful. And some, her vocals sometimes would just melt your heart and, and make you cry. But anyway, that's it. I appreciate you sitting around and listening to me talk about the Roaches, a band that I have loved for many, many, many years. And I'm hoping that this medley that I play right now will introduce you to the Roaches and maybe inspire you to go out and buy their records or CDs. So sit back and listen, and I'll see you on the other side. We are Maggie and Terry and Suzzy.
gentle kind I don't have to prove myself all of the time Working, working years at a job Burning for a rain Burning for a rain I had no shoes and I complained Until I met a man who had no feet That's really beat I had no feet and I complained Until I met a man who had no knees That was his disease I had no knees and I complained Until I met a man and you know what These tiny bones, I lay them on my line. They are you, and you, and you. As fragile as the remnants of a bird. Without the guts, without the worm, with rain into the they could flush away and there anyway that's it i appreciate you uh, remember to like comment share subscribe to ring that bell for future notifications and until the next time remember me i'm steve schnee the cd junkie <laughs>